Hey, Snickers back again. Back, 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 back again with Tiny Code 9. Oh, yeah, in my house. Excuse me. Okay, Tiny Code 9. Right, I've done a couple of things since that last video from Tiny Core, okay? But hardly anything, and I'm going to show you them now. Now, as you can see on the bottom, there's no browser icon, but there's a GIMP icon because I've installed GIMP. That's all I've really done. So, what I've done here, I've installed Elsa Mixer so I can get our audio working correctly, okay? You'll need to do this first before you do anything else, to be honest with you. Otherwise, there's going to be no sound. I need to start again. Uh, some firmware I've installed here as well. I don't know why I've got that, actually. There must be a reason, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Obviously, GIMP 2 is only GIMP 2 here. Obviously, if you want to recompile it for yourself, that's fine. You can do that in Tiny Core. Not a problem. So if I click on GIMP 2 here, and you'll see what I mean. That's rather fast, isn't it? Look, hello, Tiny Core, and hello, GIMP. Very nice to meet you. So you can do all your stuff in here really, really quickly on this sort of application, all right? If I go to On Demand, there you see Firefox. Now, I put it in On Demand because I don't want it booting up straight into RAM as soon as we start, okay? Because I might not want to use the browser. I might just want to do something else. But if you do, this is what happens. You click on the fox, as you've seen before. The fox appears down the bottom on the icon bar and stays there until you exit or reboot. And then the browser will open for you, okay? So that's enough of that rubbish, okay? What we're going to do today, we're going to go down to the control panel, okay? It's not going to be a long video. I'm going to make these ones on TinyCore quite short, okay? So we're going to go to control panel. The first thing I'm going to show you is about the Tiny Core W bar or W bar configurations. Now if we click here, and I'll bring it to the middle to you, so just so you can see, you can have this bar anywhere you want, okay? So it's on the bottom at the moment. If you want it on the top, you put it on the top and apply, and there it goes. Don't like it there? Move it to somewhere you like. So say you want on the left, left bottom. Should we say that one? Oh, bottom's a rude word. And it will go there. It's entirely up to you where you want it to go, okay? So I'm just going to keep it on the bottom for now, so you know what we're doing. And you can add extra programs here if you want to. Right, icon size. <clears throat> you can make them big or small. So if we apply them both, see how the icons get bigger and bigger? Or we'll turn that right up. They're enormous! Yeah. So that's a nice and easy one, okay? Uh, that's about right, okay? All depends how you like your bar, really, isn't it? When you think about it. You can click on more here. There's lots of other stuff you can do if you want to. Okay, these are optional. Okay, don't have them if you don't want to. So we go back, back in time. And we'll close that one down. The next one you want to play with is mouse tool. You can configure how sensitive your mouse is going to be. Okay, just easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I know. What more can I say? You don't need to really use backup and restore because we've actually installed it onto a hard drive, so it's no big deal, is it? Yes, you can change the date and time if you want to. So if I click on date and time, all seems to be hunky dory, to be honest with you. Yeah, all seems to be hunky dory. Don't have to do nothing, do I? Set completely. Wallpapers, okay? Look at wallpaper. Right, you can change the colour of your wallpaper to anything you want. So if I do that or that. Now we go that. Go preview. That's what it's going to look like. So you can change the colours. You can also import your own desktops to whatever you want to do. Move them down there a bit darker. Okay. Preview them again. That's better. You're done. Can you see how it's graduated as well? That's a nice little one. But the next thing we're going to do, we're going to install a file manager. Because you want to put stuff in your files, don't you? Otherwise, if you're not used to using Tiny Core, you're going to go, well, where is my files? Well, that's an easier an answer and a hard answer. Yeah. So we'll go to apps, okay? We're going to go to remote. And I want to find an easy one. So PC man, FM, I think it's called. And there he is. So we, I know this actually works. That's why I've chosen this one. I want to mount that on boot, don't I? Of course I do. So we go go. And it'll start downloading for us. And we'll actually get a decent file manager. And I'll show you what you've got to do with it. Okay, so now we're done. Oh, there he is. Look, right on the end. Can you see it? Right on the enemy thing here. Yeah, that thing there. So all we've got in there at the moment is our desktop. We will have to make our own other stuff. So we're going to create a new folder. So this one we're going to call music, for instance. There's our music folder. And then you'll want a, hmm, say we say video. Yeah. So, the video folder 
You have to make all the folders yourself, okay? That's how it works. But then you'll get to use this more of a GUI than a CLI machine. So that's one big thing that you do need. Now, as I said before, you do need to get Alter working correctly first. Now, that's, this can be hit and miss. It all depends on what system you're using. Many moons ago, <clears throat> it was quite easy. It was really, really easy. I had a bit of trouble with this on real hardware, but got it to run in, in the end. Okay, in the end. But yeah, it did work. It's not a problem. And so you're saying, well, how do I do other stuff? And I'm, you're saying, oh, what sort of other stuff do you want to do, to be honest with you? Well, how do I write a document? Right, there's no LibreOffice in here at the moment. There used to be. I'm sure there used to be. So if I type in Abbey Word, Abbey Word will still be there. And so will Numeric. okay? So you've got the basics. And I've done this loads and loads of time before. We don't need that to load on boot, do we? We could have that on demand. We don't need it going straight away. This is a really quick one for it to do. Blah, 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 blah. It gets all our themes for us. And downloads all this stuff, okay? So we've got our Abbey Word. It is there, but it's not running. So you've got our file manager, we've got a browser, we've got stuff to do Gimpage with, okay. Uh, we've got Elsa installed, so we've got sounds, which is even better. But that's the basics, really. But the thing is, it's so fast. Now see, if I go and right click and go to On Demand, Abbey Word is there. And I click on it, it thinks about it, bush, we're there. Do you see what I mean? Nice and quick. I'm not sure what version it is, have a look, shall we? Might be an older one. No, it's 3.0.2. Ideal for just doing quick documents, really. But I guess that most of you will probably be using Google Docs, or it's an online document thing. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, one thing you shouldn't do in VirtualBox, okay? I'm going to show you this now. This is what you shouldn't do in VirtualBox. So I'll go to Browse, and we're going to go to VLC. Do not install VLC. Because it'll get your screen resolution down to 480 by 480, okay? Because it downloads a load of Xorg stuff as well with it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, of course you do. So don't do that in the box. But if you do, just reinstall it again. No big deal, is it? Or don't do it at all. Anyway, that's enough for Tidy Core today. Sneaky next out. I'll see you later. Buzz away.